are able to play the instruments. Of course, it is important, but mainly to be at the service of the person in front of them. Hi, Marianne, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Hi, Victoria, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for coming here. And you are referred to us by Ailey Robinson. And um, I am pretty new to the harp scene. Well, actually, I'm new to many harp scene because none of my guests has so far come from the same country. And you're right now in Italy. Tell us about your harp journey. When do you realize the harp was the right instrument for you? And how did you get started? And, and how do you come to where you are nowadays? Yeah. So actually, I was five years old, and I saw a program on TV, and there was a beautiful harpist with a big, big instrument and a beautiful sound. And I said, I want to play that instrument. I didn't know what was, what was it, actually. And I went back home, and I said to my mother, I want to play this instrument. And she said, oh, it's a little bit expensive, big, rare, you know. Why don't you play the piano, the guitar? And I said, no, if it's not the harp, I won't play anything. <laughs> so everything You're very determined. Like harp is the yeah, instrument. For you. Exactly. <laughs> and, yeah, um, and then actually, the, when did you sorry. start studying the harp eventually? So actually, I had to wait until my 10th uh, anniversary years old. Yeah. And uh, we moved uh, in this year in, in Brittany, in the north west of France, which is actually a Celtic. Uh, countryside of uh, of France, which is very near uh, musically and culturally to uh, Wales, um, Ireland, maybe Scotland. So the harp, especially the Celtic harp, is very used there. So it was easier to begin the harp as a, as a child, of course. So I began at the Conservatory of Lannion in the north of Brittany. And, uh, I heard that the harp from there are strung with metal strings. Is that true? So probably, yes, during the Middle Ages, okay. especially in Ireland, the barks were very famous to play with their nails, actually, to avoid mm -hmm. you know, cutting their fingertips with um, these beautiful strings that were made uh, of uh, stain or gold or um, I think silver to different kind of, of metal. And nowadays, some people are still reconstructing these kind of harps. But actually, it's not the traditional modern harp that we use, maybe, in, mm -hmm. in Brittany. I see. And uh, when did you end up in Italy? And why, why did you decide to make the move from France to Italy? Yeah. So about uh, 18 years old, I decided to be a musician. So I went uh, in another city in France to study Middle Ages music, Renaissance music, and Baroque music. And then I discovered actually Italian culture, especially Italian Renaissance, you know, Italian Baroque music. So I had uh, a grant to study in Venice for one year, and it was absolutely marvelous. And then I decided uh, to move to Bologna for a three years program at the university. And then I, I stayed here because I thought it was beautiful and it's a beautiful countryside to, to live. And uh, I was a good musician, quite interesting. That's really awesome. And now, one of your latest album, actually, it is your latest project, New Life, is centered around uh, a poet in Italy. It's to celebrate his 700th anniversary. Tell us about this project. And, and I know the album is part of a bigger project. So tell us all about it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the project has just one week old. And um, actually, I began to think about dance last year during the lockdown. I started to read all the books because um, I didn't do the high school in, in Italy. Here, dance is very well known. You know, everybody studies um, dance during middle high school. And I just wanted to discover a little bit more of this wide uh, poetry, philosophy, uh, scientific uh, books that are very, very important here in Italy. He is the one who actually founded the new Italian language, so one of the ones, of course, uh, not only the one, but it, it's very interesting because we can read uh, Italian in his own words that are more than 700 years ago. <laughs> That's very incredible, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the project was like creating a music that could fit around his text. So I always had the idea, I wanted to have a, an actor who would read his poetry text. And to play the music 
And we know a little bit of the music of his time. And actually, some people have done already some uh, philosophical or philological researches on the music of his time. We don't know exactly which music he could, he could have heard or if he could have even have played some music. But uh, thinking about uh, dance and reading his text, uh, what impressed me is that actually it's a very modern language and actually is speaking about us, about the human being, about um, not being a beast anymore, not being mm -hmm. animals, not reacting to fear, to anger, to despair, mm -hmm. to the worst emotion we can have, but creating something new, like a new language, a new civilization, a new friendship between new human beings. And I thought it was very... Um, modern, especially in these times that we are all living on the planet right now. So I decided actually to compose some new music. So this is uh, the way I wanted to, to perform for dance. And I used my uh, electrical harp. And uh, I made this project with a composer, a cute producer. He's called uh, Roberto Bassuti, he's from Bologna. And uh, he has done like a, a beautiful, uh, um, corner around the music, you know, uh, with the electronics, acoustic instruments, rhythm, melodic instruments. So it, it's like the harp and the orchestra behind the harp. Yeah. <laughs> and you choose the electric harp partly because the shape kind of represents, or it's very similar to the Gothic harp, isn't it? Yes, actually, the, the harp I choose is a Kamak harp, which has uh, actually the shape of the same. Uh, uh, instrument that were used uh, in, during the time mm -hmm. of dance and actually I really liked also the possibilities of this instrument not only to be played like an acoustic instrument but also for all the re-elaboration re of the sound uh, with electronics especially so using some delays reverb echoes uh, but also treating the harp like uh, like if it was a joke actually like if it was a play for, for the music, you know? So it's more a soundscape sometimes than a composition. Mm. Yeah, and I get that from listening to the album. The, the, it's very atmospheric. It, it brings you to a certain mood and a certain mindset that is quite different than the, the music that I used to hear, but it's very uh, relaxing somehow. I, I actually like to listen to it when I'm working. It, it put me in a really good mind space, which I found very interesting. Um, how is it like for you to capture the words and the, the, the wisdom and the inspiration of a poet into music? How was that process like for you? Did it take you very long to, to figure out how you would like to translate that into, into sound? Well, actually, I think creativity, at least for me, is, is never the same. So sometimes I had to read a lot and to get inspired by, by a lot of words and treating some um, inspiration from the structure of the text, so maybe, or the words he was using or the emotion he wanted to convey and I wanted to, to play with. Some of the times it was like one word or two words, like uh, Rosa Sempiterna, which is the everlasting rose, which is actually the rose of the paradise, which is maybe somewhere in, in a divine world or maybe somewhere uh, in the planet's uh, movement. And I just get inspired by, by these words. So sometimes it's a long chapter, sometimes it's only one or two words. Mainly I would say the inspiration came from a um, meditative state of his words because actually it's, it's a process between the inferno, the hell, Forget for and then the paradise. And it's like a way actually that you go through something that is very deep inside of you, and then you go in the water and like you pur purify yourself. And then you find that there is beauty, there is harmony, there is peace, there is love. So I was very interested of this kind of uh, process actually. And where can we find this album if we would like to purchase it? So actually, my album is only on the website uh, um, mariangubri.com and um, it's uh, still a digital album and in two weeks we will get also the CD and uh, during the winter we will have it on all digital platforms all over the world. So 
Awesome. We'll, we'll make sure we post a link to your website for our audience to check it out. And Thank there was you. a really beautiful uh, video of you playing uh, New Life, and I can't say it in Italian, so I'm going to avoid making a mistake. But it was a really beautiful piece of music, so I'll make sure we post a link Thank to that. You. Um, now, you also have other solo albums that you have done before. And how is that sound compared to this one? Do you think they are very similar artistically, or do you like to try different things out in, in your music? How, how are they different or, or the same? Yeah, that's a very interesting question because I tend to be very curious and uh, I always want to um, try something new. So th this one is very different, I think, from the other one. Even if uh, last year I produced uh, an album that was called Believe, a very small one, and um, this was still an album with uh, the electric harp. Uh, solo with no treatment of the sound, very few treatments like small delays, uh, small reverb. And the album before in 2018 was an album with uh, Celtic and modern pedal harp, always with my composition. And I would say, yes, there is a fil rouge inside, there is something that unifies maybe, um, I would say, a Celtic melody <laughs> and uh, mainly. The treatment of uh, model music on improvisation on modes. Uh, maybe I could say it's one of the signature that I want to go over and over. Then the, the sound, the shape of the sound can be different. If I change the instrument or in the last album, the Danuava, which is uh, with the music producer that is like more wide, like more soundscapes than actually solo music. So hard. And on the topic on improvisation and playing with modes, um, you have studied heart therapy and you're currently the director for the International Heart Therapy Program in Italy. And we have a lot of audience who are interested in studying heart therapy or becoming heart therapists. Tell us about heart therapy and what can we expect when we study and also as a practitioner, as a heart therapist? Because uh, I think improvisation, if I understand correctly, is it's a, a quite an integral part of of uh, heart therapy, uh, music playing. So I would like to learn more. It is, yeah. So I I had um, the great chance to study with uh, Christina Turin, which is the founder of the International Heart Therapy Program uh, in San Diego, and then of course now uh, all over the world. And I was quite interesting at uh, the beginning of the 2010, I would say, about um, how some can influence our bodies, our minds, and our emotions. And I wanted to try it in a very practical way. And what I saw is that that program was very practical, and actually it is. So improvisation uh, has, uh, as uh, Christina teaches, is actually on the Greek modes, so very ancient modes that are um, melodic modes. Uh, we still use these kind of modes in Celtic music, in jazz music, in Renaissance, also medieval music. And um, being free to improvise on these modes makes you more concentrated on the feeling, on the moods, on the atmosphere, and less on the sound that you have to play and to read the book, to read the scores, and be careful to the right notes, the right fingering, and so on, the right rhythm. And actually, um, Heart therapy is more about the relationship between you and the other people in front of you, and is more about feeling the state, emotional state, um, mind state, or physical state of the person in front of you, and trying to help her uh, to feel a better state, like she is, I don't know, down tempo, very slow tempo, maybe sad, maybe a little bit depressed. You just try to enter in her state with the music. So it's like modeling um, her state with the music. And then very slightly, you can move her to another state. So she can be more uh, happy, more joyful, more relaxed, maybe, and uh, experience the feeling of the sound. So this is what we do uh, musically. And then we can actually play everywhere because heart therapy has no border, I would say. You can play in the hospital, you can play in, in the nursery in um, for old people, for uh, newborn babies. 
in Niku, for instance, you could play also um, in prison, in um, why not for yoga or meditation sessions. And I think in the next years, maybe next 10 years, we will really need more therapeutic musicians, actually. Mm, that not only are able to play the instruments, of course it is important, but mainly to be at the service of the person in front of them. And it's less about uh, being a great performer and playing as much notes <laughs> or as quick as you can, but it's more being in the feeling, being uh, hearing actually what you have mm -hmm. in front of you. That sounds uh, wonderful. And I, I have a feeling that you're right. And partly because I think we have been in the pandemic for so long. I think we're all suffering some kind of collective <laughs> um, trauma. And I think using music as a way to heal is going to be very uh, much in need. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I have had the experience last week, actually. We've been in a small lockdown uh, this winter here in Italy. And I had all my music lessons online. And last week, I had the experience to have back my small students uh, at the Harp School where I teach. And they were so, um, I would say, somewhere emotion, a lot of emotion, a little bit scared, maybe, a little bit uh, strange feeling also, actually to feel the sound, to feel the sound of the Harp, to feel the sound of the Harp School, to feel the sound of the other people that were playing with them. Because online, we still have the sound, but a lot of harmonics, overtones actually are kept shut down, you know? And when you feel the experience of live music, you feel your body that is actually fulfilling with sound. That is what we call actually sound therapy, sound healing. And our body that is nearly full of water, of liquid, actually uh, feels a lot um, the power of sound. And I think what you said is quite important in these months, actually in these years that are coming to be a little bit more aware of the sound around us. Maybe also the noise, you know, because uh, when we live in, in cities, sometimes it's more noise and less silence, less music, you know. So feeling what gives us peace, what gives us life, what gives us good emotions. I think it's quite important, yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the power of sound and sort of the effect it has on us, my teacher, Josh Lane, who you happen to know, told me that you are in a hop and hang duo. So I go and look it up and I have to admit, I, I'm not familiar with the instrument. Um, I listened to it and then I also listened to um, the two of you in one of the TechX talk. And I was really struck by how uh, the two instruments really come together very well in terms of the sound. I can only imagine how it was like for the audience to be able to hear that live but tell us about um this this uh half and hang duo and and what is uh, special about this project for you uh, this duo yes so the hang is a very new instrument it was born in uh, switzerland in 2000 2005 and so nowadays in europe we, we can see it a little bit more um 10 years ago it was very rare actually and um it happened that i was invited to play uh, for the opening of a new theater in Bologna. And uh, in the other room of the theater, there was the hang player, which is Paolo Borghi, who was also playing for the opening of the theater. And I was very amazed because I didn't know this instrument. It was a beautiful sound. And I had the feeling actually, not knowing what was, what was it, only by the sound, it, it could have been a harp because it's very near, as you said. So we have the attack of the sound, the, the percussive beginning of the sound that is very like the harp when you track the string, it's like percussion, it's very precise. And then we have uh, what is common in between harp and uh, like bells, um, tubular bells, gongs, uh, Tibetan bells, which is the resonance of the sound. So the sound of the harp is very long in the air. It's uh, the vibration that can last sometimes 20 seconds, 30 seconds, it depends from the, from the string, and the same with the hang. So we had actually like uh, a strange duet, like two herbs or two, two hangs, yeah. And of course the hang can be far much more um, percussive. And the specificity of the hang is that it has very specific um, scales of music. So 
so we, we were speaking about modes, and uh, so many times they use uh, Indian, uh, Japanese, Chinese modes, which, which are very interesting for our uh, ears. So, yeah, we had a, a lot of fun <laughs> together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a really pleasant discovery. Um, and I look at it at first, I didn't know what to make of it because I I couldn't really quite imagine the sound that is going to come out of it. But then as soon as you start playing it and, and I hear how it works together with the harp, it makes a lot of sense <laughs> to mm -hmm. put the two together. So that was really yeah. awesome to see. Yeah, yeah thank you. And um, you are also running Heart Festival in Bologna. Yes. Tell us about the Heart Festival and how often does it take place? And will you be able to do it this year because of the pandemic? No, we didn't. So uh, it should have been the seventh edition this year in February. We didn't do anything. I didn't want to do an online session uh, since uh, we prefer to have concerts live, mainly for the students. And uh, we will uh, do the summer edition 2021 in June with uh, local musicians mainly uh, to avoid, you know, transport restrictions, vaccine restrictions, and so on. So for this year, it's a very small edition. And the idea of the Bologna Harp Festival was actually at the beginning for my students, I would say like this, uh, to show them kind of different kinds of harps, harpists, you know, from jazz to Celtic to classical to pedal with loops, with electronics. Uh, and um, I wanted always to invite somebody who would have done um, a workshop, two days or three days workshop. Uh, to study improvisation, a specific uh, kind of uh, music. So we had uh, Ivy Robertson last year. Yeah, we had uh, Nirvine, which is the director of the Harp Festival in uh, in Dinan, and uh, jazz music with Marcella Garboni and so on. So actually, it began like this, and then it was like a small platform to have some exchanges with uh, local Italian musicians and mainly European musicians. And uh, we invited also Christina Turin. She did a beautiful concert, a two days workshop on heart therapy. So something who can expand the, main, the mind of the students. And then of course, make some exchanges with other uh, musicians. But I think it's very important for the chorus performance. Yeah. Well, good luck with the summer edition of the Heart Festival. I hope it's going to go really well for you and <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, when I was reading up about your project um, that you have done recently in the bio, you had mentioned that you have done a tour when you're 20 uh, between France and Spain with a foot um, player, and you had a donkey <laughs> that carries your instrument. Tell us about that. Like, what, what, what's going on in there? Why is there a donkey? I was very intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was during our studies in, in France. Uh, um, my friend was actually born on, on the way to Santiago, which is a city in, in the west of Spain, in Galicia. And during Middle Ages, it was a very important city uh, where pilgrims were going by foot, uh, leaving their house and going until Santiago, like a, a pose, a reflective uh, uh, pose. And uh, she said, I want to do this uh, with a friend of mine. And she, she invited me. And we said, okay, that's a good idea. But we want to do only the pilgrimage because it, it seemed a little bit boring. So we decided to make a concert every day. Mm -hmm. So she was playing the flute. The flute. I was playing the harp. <laughs> and as you know, it, it, it was like, I, I don't know, in miles, but it's uh, 1,600 kilometers from uh, the, the place we live to Santiago. So it took us three months, um, like, you know, walking every day between five, six hours a day. And at the evening, we were doing um, the concert. So as I was playing the harp, I had the necessity to have somebody who, who helped me with the harp. And we decided to, to have a donkey, uh, which is a very strong animal. I didn't know anything about the donkeys <laughs> before. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it is. A, it, it was a very strong, and donkeys are very strong. So we could climb over the mountain between France and and Spain, and it was carrying a lot of things at the beginning. Then at the end, we decided to leave some, <laughs> you know, luggages that were a little bit heavy. Mm. And I think it was very interesting because um, he helped us also to create new connections with people because. 
it was so strange. It was so rare and it was so funny. Yeah, it, was, it must <laughs> so, be a good topic of conversation. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, you know, it was an adventure every day because they stole the donkey someday. Uh, we found uh, so many, you know, events and stories. And, and uh, yeah, with children, it was a great way to have uh, relationships, uh, you know. It was still a, a time we didn't have uh, cell phones and uh, mm-hmm. we were like very free. <laughs> and people were sometimes, some pilgrims were uh, walking um, quicker than we did. And uh, they were like advertising the concert we would have done the night arriving at the, at, the, at the place. And they were saying to all the people in the village, oh, there are two girls. One is called Marianne, the other one is called Marie. They have a donkey, one is playing the harp, the other one is playing the flute, and they want to have a concert tonight. (laughs) And the people were so amazed by this story that was coming from the Middle Ages directly. So, oh, yes, let's do the concert (laughs) in the place of the city. Everything happened very freely and very uh, happily, actually. Yeah. Sounds like a very memorable experience. And you have since traveled yeah. to many places around the world to perform, such as Brazil, China, Sweden, Switzerland. Was there any uh, performance or uh, trips that were also very memorable for you as a, a musician, as a harpist? Well, everything is uh, is marvelous, actually, and it's always a surprise and an honor uh, to be invited uh, abroad and to meet people. Um, going outside Europe has been, I think, the most life-changing for me. Uh, um, I would say mainly in, in South America and also in India and in, in China, in Hong Kong especially, uh, because they are countries that are very different from ours culturally, especially India is very different. And um, yeah, maybe also the United States, but I think the United States were more uh, European life, you know, the manner, the civilization, the, the habits we have uh, in Europe. We are a lot uh, impressed by the, by the States. So we, we tend to imitate, I would say, uh, this culture. Yeah, I remember what seeing I a picture of you in Hong Kong, and I actually I was born in Hong Kong, so I was like, I recognize oh, really? that concert hall. <laughs> ah, I didn't yeah. know about it. That is great. Yeah, mm. uh, I would say it, it was marvelous to feel actually the kindness, um, the sweetness of the people we met that didn't know us and we are nobody for them, you know, here in Europe. I played the harp, but okay, I don't feel very special or very superior to anybody. And and they were like welcoming us, like we were, you know, so welcome, so um, yeah, such an honor for for them to have us. And actually, it was the opposite for us. So we were very very happy. And I think the connection we made uh, were very profound, actually. And um, what I felt is like, yeah, the humanity is more near than what we think. Mm-hmm. We have more connections than what we think, even if the culture might be very different. Yeah. So, yeah. And I hope that you'll be able to get back on the road again soon and be able to play music with people within your country and also outside of uh, Italy. We have to. We have to. I think this summer will, will be mainly outside open air concerts, maybe in Italy, maybe somewhere else. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Exactly. So how can we stay in touch with your work? Uh, what is the best way to stay in touch and, and, and look at the different things that you're working on right now? Yeah, so you can follow me on my website, which is uh, mariangubri.com. And um, social media, I mainly use Facebook or Instagram. I publish normally the new CDs, new album tours, and uh, updates of concerts or workshops I can do. So... I will include the links to those uh, social media and also your website in the video. Thank Thank you so much for spending your time with us. It was great pressure to get to know you and your work. And uh, I I hope that uh, the audience is going to enjoy your new project as much as I do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So I wanted to congratulate myself with your amazing job uh, with interviews of so many different harpies 
all over the world. And I see your beautiful harp and it's just a pleasure to know that you play the harp too and you've been studying a lot with stuff. So very nice. Very Thank happy you. about this. Yeah, so it, was a, nice it was a very interesting idea because um, I think I got bored in the pandemic for sure. <laughs> and then I started connecting with other harp player and start talking to Josh more about harp players just outside the world. And I realized there's a whole world to discover. Um, and where I am right now in Vancouver, um, I wouldn't say we have a very big harp scene. Um, I, I call it a little bit of a harp desert sometimes because I don't even know where to find harps. <laughs> we don't have harp showrooms. Um, there's only a handful of people that I know that play harp and obviously there are more out there. It just, I just don't know how to connect with them. So mm-hmm. through talking to Joss, I was like, okay, you know what, if I talk to you, can you send me to someone else that I can talk to? And then maybe I'll get to know the harp uh, community around the world more. So I've been, uh, I feel very fortunate that I, I was connected to so many different harpists and I've been seeing such a great uh, diversity of work. So it has been a wonderful mm-hmm. project to be a part of. So thank you so much for participating in it. It's, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Sister. Thank you.